all right welcome to another video in this video we're gonna go over how to level a profession in particular blacksmithing this is very similar to weaponsmithing as well as everything is the same except for the result which is not weapons but armor uh blade armor in particular uh, because ores might be confusing for new people and uh, people leveling um, their profession might be confused as there are quite a few things to know about to avoid mistakes I just leveled my weaponsmithing just yesterday uh, all the way to 100 from scratch in about 2 hours I have the advantage that I have all my ores available already as I send them over to this uh, alt character which is my builder account um, from my main so if you do have a uh, lack of ores ask around for people that have ores people that have auto loot pets that can auto loot ores uh, have a way easier way of getting the ores rather than you would have to manually go out and uh, mine everything if there's nobody available to uh, borrow you the ore or give you the ore then you're gonna have to go out there and find the ores they have made it much easier to find ore as each ore as you can see has a specific description on telling you where you can find it basically the levels explained on the ores are the levels shown on the maps so you see the levels are uh, descriptive on every map so you can go search on that map in the level range to get that particular ore now you know where to get ores pretty standard to start crafting I'm already level 3 because I just did the tutorial quest which is something you can perfectly follow as well. There are basically two kinds of materials. As you can see there are the first row and there's the second row. The first row is something you need to craft from your ingots and the second row is always going to be vendor material. So if you don't have what's in the second row you simply have to buy them from the NPC, either blacksmith or weaponsmithing doesn't matter, they both have the same stuff in store. So we need tallow to begin, I'll buy 100 because I know I don't need that many. But so when you look at the vendor, it's auto completed, if you have this on, there is no harm in having this on at all, I always have it on, it just takes all the items from your bag automatically and fill them in for what you need. If you have this off, you'll have to manually select the items. Which is a waste of time so just have this on and i recommend when you're leveling always craft the highest level material or item available to you that way you will always get the most xp out of it blacksmith taken level 3 so we can only craft up to level 3 items these are kind of random scratch items but they're just there to level as you can see we don't have copper blanks so the blanks is something you need to craft by combining the vendor material as well with ore, which is what you can find in the open world. We have our impure copper ore already, so we're just gonna craft some blanks. And this is the tricky part with leveling. There's gonna be lots of different kinds of blanks that you can make. These are called copper blanks, but there's gonna be, if you look here in the beginning, there are uh, copper blanks, there's plating, mandrel, ingot strips. And this is going to be like this for all the future new uh, qualities. And there's going to be different ones as well. As you can see here, we have a base. Uh, we have tips, which you don't see here yet. So it's going to expand as well. Um, so try to stick to up to two different kinds. So you don't end up like me and having lots of backspace wasted on different types and different kinds of uh, ingots, basically. They're basically ingots that you need to use to craft uh, the weapons. So to, to make the lock we need the, the blanks here, so we crafted some blanks and then we can make some locks. I would recommend as soon as you open up the crafting screen and you look at the amount of colors that are available. If you have two, if the majority is green, you go for a full green set. If the majority is blue, you go for a full blue set. And so on. Um, when you have both blue and the green equal, you would have to go for green still because green has the biggest percentage on completing on succeeding so always mostly for leveling go for green when you get to the level 100 or whatever max level it is that you're watching this video at you will want to try to go for blue or epic but that's going to depend on your 
inspiration and that is something i'll explain as we go when we get to inspiration for now we're just gonna craft stuff also when you complete a full color set so full green full blue for full epic you're going to get bonus xp for having completed that so that's a free one now we're gonna level five but we didn't get a new recipe sometimes you get a new recipes sometimes you won't you simply keep crafting the highest level available to you i don't do this right now because i still have lots of materials left over from this current material and the ones i have to craft here are different materials these are mandrels so that is where it gets tricky with blacksmithing weapon smithing try to use the blanks that you made first before you start to make a different kind of the high level because you're gonna end up filling your backspace very very quickly that way got really lucky there and that's how we get to level six and this one needs copper plating so as it as you see it's gonna be different kinds of ingots needed for every kind of item so i always try to fully train the items i currently have before making a new type there we go everything is done and it easily shows you what uh, what platings you need or what ingots you need and then it simply shows as well what materials you need for them as you can see you're gonna need quite a lot of materials from the vendor itself but that is easy to get it's just gold the ones that are, not, are that are annoying to get is the actual ore you might have to go out in the world and uh, mine some that way now if you do have the auto looter like i said it's going to be much much easier for you to get those materials if you do have it try to help other people sell your ore a bit uh, because it is a pain to level it if you don't have the auto looter with that said i also would also recommend to only do blacksmithing and or black uh, weapon smithing if you do have the auto looter getting ore for you if you don't then i would recommend sticking to leather working and tailoring because those materials are much easier to get so we got to level 8 as you can see we unlocked bronze items instead of copper which is the next um, quality basically and the materials from the vendor will change as well as the materials from the ore uh, harvesting just to get rid of those it's basically free xp i can still squeeze out of the materials i have so we get level eight we get that one and we jump to nine so it's still much much valuable to, to still finish the materials you have don't panic that you're crafting one or two levels below the maximum level simply make sure you use all the materials you still have because it's still worth a lot also have to mention that in the beginning as you level it's easier to get xp than as you get to a later level so it's going to depend on that as well I also get rid of my materials from before so I don't clutter my back too much. Once I've done what I had to do, I get rid of it. And then you simply repeat the process, simply craft what you can craft until your materials are depleted. Then either make some more blanks and if you can't that's probably because you don't have ore. So then you go for the ore in the wild. If you do have the ore then it's probably the materials from the vendor that you lack and you simply buy more materials from the vendor. From 18 we get a new quality which is called iron which is requiring four iron ore and peat uh coal sorry peat was the previous one so i will get rid of all the peat well i will first check what i can still finish up from my previous craftings i wouldn't recommend selling the ore as this is the harder stuff to get so make sure to keep these bang these send them to an alt or just sell them on the auction house because people will need them when they do level their professions. From the uh, tutorial quest you will get potions of inspiration. These are very handy for endgame so make sure you keep these. These are going to make it easier to get inspiration on successful crafts. That way you're going to be crafting epic qualities much faster. Well not much faster but it does help. Uh, what is free is free. What you get bonus is bonus. So why not use it.
Sometimes you'll see, as I see right now, that I cannot craft the next one because it says my tool level is too low. I don't know why it's still in the game, but it is so that you're aware of it. There are different types of um, crafting kits and there's different types of a, uh, the tools that you need to mine the ore and the same goes for alchemy, there's different sickles, there's different... Uh, these are in every, every profession basically. So what I would recommend is to buy all of them at once so you don't get stuck on crafting. And when it does tell you that your crafting tool is too low, you can simply use the next one and you can then vend or, or toss away the other one. And it goes for two more levels, so I'll buy these already as well and keep them chronological so I know when to move to the next one and now I can craft because this is a higher level crafting tool as the previous one. I don't know why this is still in the game. There used to be a different mechanic, uh, two professions, to crafting. And then I understood why it was because you had to buy basically upgrades for your kits so you could have multiple of these attempts which is now default I see but back in the day you would only have one default attempt to try and you would have to buy extra upgrades to add extra attempts or to increase the amount of colors you can combine uh, that's all now default so I think it's just a leftover of from what it used to be Something handy to know at this point as well is that uh, when you have multiple items on the same level you could look which ones require the least amount of items to craft. So in this case um, making a chest plate which is what I did was not the best way because it takes 5 each. You would have to look for the cheapest on the level and simply go for those as they give all the same amount of XP but they simply take more materials from you. So. It's very smart to look at the lowest cost and go for that. Now on 28th we moved on from iron to steel so we can get rid of all the iron, squeeze out what we still have. Um, as you can see here I'll go for this so that this is gone, since the last bits anyway. But I would never recommend crafting the items for the chest or pants as they require 4 as you can see right now. Simply look at the minimum the minimal users of materials and go for those go for those first because like i said the xp you gain for each item is depending on the level and not on whether it's a chest plate or a pants or whatever then you can see as well um a third material shows up here so to recap the first material are blanks that you craft with vendor material and ore that you find in the wild the second material is again vendor material. The third item is something quite tricky. These are basically items you can find from craftsman chests. These are chests that you can find in your profession tab, in your crafting tab, sorry. During leveling, I recommend when you are still leveling, do not open them. Uh, if you do open them, they will give you random materials from all possible professions. When you do have a profession, it's going to give materials only for your learned profession. So you can direct the resources from the chest to only give materials for the profession that you own, which is obviously a smarter choice. Or if you don't have access to those crafting chests, uh, you can buy the materials as well from the Goblin Ball. So it's here, components. These go up to meteorite and you need to respect it as well I see or friendly. Another uh, alternative that is mostly better for end gamers so the goblin ball NPC is a bit outdated you can go to all rehat and get those items from there. This NPC here Cosimo the Flui they, he offers these items he offers one of each and these are all categorized per profession so the first four are blacksmithing the next four are weaponsmithing the next four are tailoring probably and the next four are leather working and so on now i don't go too much into detail because yes you'll have different namings uh, for example view is once steel spikes steel thread plates steel thread plates steel chain so you see that steel is returning but there are no steel versions of these these are the meteoric ones and exceptionals and so on. Basically, it's going to take 
the highest and the highest quality one is going to count for everything that's below so if I have a steel one then it's going to work for the steel but it's not going to work for the next level which is probably mithril if you have a mithril chain then it's going to work for mithril and steel and iron chains that is why they simply put the highest quality materials already in the vendor so you simply buy the highest quality one and you basically set for all the coming levels that you are going to level in so at this point you're going to have to either buy the materials from the albihut vendor or the goblin ball vendor or you're going to have to use craftsman chests from reincarnations from other people those are your three resources your three sources to get those resources I myself had them on my main and I sent them via the mail from all we had to this character. Alright, and we are back now with the correct materials. So I have the one for blacksmithing, I have every possible one and I bought 50 of each. So that when we now can craft, you see that these are used for every type. But um, they work for every level, so you don't need to min max different types and then you simply continue crafting the way you did before And level 38 pushes us from steel, I believe it was, to mithril. So you need mithril ore and you need charcoal, which is from the vendor, mithril ore is from the open world. And again, try to focus crafting the ones that require the fewest amount of ingots, which is in this case mandrel. And then 48, and I think you can see the pattern here, every 10 levels, 38, 48, 28, we get a new quality crafting. So 48 starts adamant, and nothing really changes from here on out, it's always the same. Alright, this time it's uh, not 58 but 57 where we can lock the next uh, layer which is the meteorite. And again, I recommend if you have a bank account or a bank character or a guild bank, 
I recommend sending all the leftover stuff to that bank so that you can um, give them to people that are leveling after you so they can make use of it. Try to recycle as much as you can from the materials, not to waste too much. So now that we're about to hit level 71, we're going to reach a different type of leveling as we've been leveling all this time now on leveling gear, so we made basically useless gear that we just keep entering. But when we get to 75, we get into the first endgame levels of when they streamlined gearing, <clears throat> so that means You'll see a different pattern of gears that you will be able to craft and you'll see a different pattern of materials as well. I believe 75 is going to be the first level, or 73 I see. So 73 unlocks a different kind of crafting system. So you basically, instead of having to craft multiple kinds of uh, platings and ingots, as you see here, the strips, blanks, ingot, mandrel, platings, those will disappear and they're going to be one singular ingot. So level 70 patch was a, the demon patch where demonologists got introduced so everything was demon at the time and so you only have to craft demon ingots and then craft the endgame gear back at that time. Now the endgame gamer is interesting because you can craft his gear and as you see this is level 94 gear already but you can equip this already at level 67 and same goes for the weapons that means that these things you can craft and as you can see they're bound when equipped so they're tradable. So you can craft these and give them to people, to guildies, to your reincarnations when you level. To get a boost in power when you level from 67 all the way to endgame. Which is going to make leveling in that phase much much easier and faster. I used to craft these a lot for my apprentices. So level 73 that is demonic ore. This is the... The feared ore of many people that know about this because this ore is pretty hard to get and there's not many spawn points it shows level 71 to 85 locations now that seems very broad but the only ones i know was wellabel which you can find in dane that you can find in umwar sorry right before going to foldale you go wellabel so you can farm here in demonic ore and you can farm them in sogoth 
which is here and that is it and it's not that many it's not that many in Sogoth there's a few more in um, Valabal so I recommend going Valabal first but there's not that many now it does say 71 to 85 so I might be outdated on this and I hope I am I hope they expanded the maps that this ore is being dropped on because 71 that means it should drop here already as well well we can check that actually real quick let's test if you can find them in those other maps so that I can uh, fulfill this video and inform you guys as well if this is true or not so level 71 zone Dane Silver Valley let's do an auto rent that mirror spot and see what our little looter harvests so I see already here in the chat Mitrid ore is what you are farming here so I guess this is still considered a level 70 zone where you probably level 271 so we'll have to pick one after this there's some mining nodes here and they give meteorite ore as well so that is not good maybe we'll have to push a bit higher let's try spiral witch There are no immediate mining nodes anywhere, so this isn't even a good spot to have. But I see my looter looting meteorite ore as well. So this isn't the spot either. And I doubt any of Amber is going to give demonic ore. And then we get to demon lair, which is the demon patch. So this is giving a uh, demonic ore. But after that, we get Irene, and Irene already drops the Dragon Ore. So that's not either. So Slanger drops Oracle Cub Ore, and Eden drops Dendrite Ore. Just like KUE does and Auri Hut. So Demonic Ore is very, very limited, and there's not many ways to get them. Now they did pledge to make crafting easier the mining easier and I guess they did in some ways um, I believe they increased the rate of demonic ore dropping from mining nodes in Wellabel and Sogoth so this is in Sogoth and you'll see in the chat some demonic ore popping in from my looter there we go but it's a measly five maybe to ten five to ten or each so it's not that great when we move to wellabel we might have more luck so let's check that out let's spread the chat so we can clearly see when we get new ones There it goes and we get four so I doubt they increased drop rate it's going to be still a pain in the ass for mining ore now what they did do was they reduced the amount of ore required to craft so that is something they did do to help but yeah this is the only way to get the money ore it's either Wellabel or it's so good so I wish you guys good luck on that again if you are in need of ore and simply try to ask people simply try to ask your guild friends so expect this place this level to be a bottleneck of your progression because this is going to take a while to level
uh, like I said at the beginning, I recommend you getting the auto looter and the book that allows you to auto loot ore and herbs because otherwise this profession is going to be a pain for you to deal with daily. It goes from simply doing dailies in Arena and KOE where your loot will automatically mine everything for you so you don't have to pay attention to that versus to where you don't have the auto looter uh, mine stuff for you and you'll have to look for them actively while still doing your dailies. So it's a big bonus when you can get all this stuff while you're simply doing just dailies. We're almost 85, 85 is where we close off the chapter of demonic ore, you survive the hardest part of blacksmithing and weaponsmithing, after that it gets easier, I promise you. And this is where we need dragon ore, so this is where the dragon patch become, and like I said before dragon ore you can get in Irene and there's tons of it, there's much much easier to get these. As you can see, demonic ore required 25, sorry, demonic ingots require 25 ore, uh, which is the same amount that dragon requires, but you will see that dragon, for whatever reason, developers decided is much easier to acquire. Most of the ore is over here in the place here. There's probably some scavenger as well, but most of my ore I get from the eastern part there's some notes already as you saw it looted twice so the notes here are much more dense and uh, are more present than on other maps there's another note here and over there see so it's uh, able to loot multiple notes near each other quicker than with the demonic ore so dragon ore is going to be much easier to get and again people that are more in endgame visit irene more often because there's a long amount of dailies that people can do compared to Valabel and Sogoth are basically places no one really goes to anymore when you're in endgame so that means people generally have way more dragon ore by going there passively as well than that you would have demonic ore because no one goes there anymore except for when they level or actively mine the ore so that's another reason why this is much easier to get so once you're past the demonic ore phase you're going to be in safe quiet waters Also, as you can see, I have saved my demonic steel ingots because I would not recommend using them to squeeze out the levels as this is the hardest resource to get in all of the blacksmithing slash rapid smithing career. So, whatever you have left over, save it, help other people with it, sell it, whatever, but do not waste it, do not recycle this one. People will be grateful for you because demonic ore is such a drag and it takes a lot of time for people to get that stuff. And yeah, from 90 it goes into the next questing. So as you can see, um, Demon was from 75 to 85, which is 10 levels. Dragon Ore is much easier to find, but only goes from 85 to 90. So. The logic there is where to find is um, very far from my bad show, but that's what it is. Developers are king here. Um, so from 90 to 95, we deal with Oracle Club Ore. Again, same amount, 25 for the same amount of ingots. And Oracle Club Ore you can find in Suslanger. It's full of there. It's a huge map. There is no way you can run out of them. And it's only five levels, so it goes rather quick as well.
95 unlocks and as you can see it moves over to the dendrite which is the current patch right now if you're watching in 13.0 this is probably still relevant um dendrite is one of those mnemonic ores but it's end game ores so you have to farm them infinitely now the best places to get these simply is uh, koe so kingdom of elements has the most which is over to here and there's all we as well so these are two end game maps that you can do for dailies and uh, it's full of pack of these things so it's pretty easy when you have an auto looter you can also farm them in eden but they're there in less in much less uh density so it's no i don't go there it's not recommended it's a waste of time i believe um the respawn of mining outs are only 20 minutes as well so when you go koe and all rehut you basically have about what a, a 10 minutes until they respawn back in koe so it's a pretty good rotation to do um now there's a quick tip here i want to give you guys uh you could learn from and that is that when you go in koe and this is something I reported, so it might still change in the future, but that is how it is right now. So people that are watching right now, and it's still as this as it is, it, this might help you. In KOE, you can only farm or mine one node, and then that node goes into a 30 minute respawn, but that goes for everybody. So whoever gets there first, that node gets it, and it disappears for 30 minutes. Whereas in Al Rihat, it works differently. It's uh, per player, so there's a node for everybody. So when I mine a certain node in Al Rihat, it will still be there for another player. And if you have two as uh, uh, mining professions, like I am building here, websmithing and blacksmithing, in Al Rihat, you'll be able to mine every single node twice. I have given an example on this before on my other video, um, showing you guys like the ten things no one tells you but you should know about i'm gonna show this real quick again in our rehut so i turn off my looter so that i can find a note and show you guys carefully should be notes here in the beginning there it is so here are some mining notes i'm going to activate my looter as you can see in chat it's going to loot once and then it's gonna loot twice even though the notes disappeared already and that is because I have two professions that are able to mine. This is something you will not see in um, KOE because it simply works different. I don't know why that is. I'll turn my looter off again to show you guys. So the density of mining nodes in Arihat is less than in KOE. But because Arihat allows you to mine double of everything, it kind of even evens out. So here we have another mining node. If I sent my looter, I'm gonna separate the chat. It's going to mine it only once and then that's it. Well, now it mined another one because there was another node. But what I wanted to see, what I wanted to explain is that it only allows you to mine one and in Aurihat it allows you to mine double the amount. I'm not sure actually for Eden. Let's check that out real quick. From what I see in Eden, I believe you can mine it double as well just like in our rehat here's some notes let's see what it does goes for it uh, does alchemy first i see so then it goes once they disappear and twice so it is like our rehat and so i assume it also has notes for everybody in eden unlike kwe where they disappear after one person loots them And the final craft level 100 we're finally there you've done it you got to the end game with your profession 
Now why did we do all this? Now why would you go to hell and pain to level blacksmithing or weaponsmithing? Easily said, it is a uh, very important to have a profession maxed out to be able to craft tier 2 gear for the end game. As tier 2, tier two gear is the best gear you can get next to tier 3. Um, as it's a def definite upgrade from tier 1. Now when you are crafting and you're on level 100, you're able to craft tools which you will need to use to convert the charge you get from astral into materials that you will need on the anvil to craft here too. That's more guide for crafting, for gearing. Uh, we're gonna stick to the blacksmithing here. So once you get to 100, what's the next thing you should do? Check the vendor and you'll have to probably buy the scroll of your current layer. Now on the first layer when it uh, unleashes, it, there's a green layer the other ones are not available. Then the blue one opens up when blue later comes. Apex troll and Apex opens up and so on and forth. We're currently in the legendary layer. So we need to buy the legendary scroll. So it will unlock, as you can see here, only tools from 100 and then all the leveling material we got. When we use the scroll, it's going to unlock all the, uh, lev well, basically end game gear, which I recommend not to craft because this is basically tier one gear. Which you can just find in Astral to Exactor 4 or by the gearing boxes. Again, this is a gearing stuff. I have guys with that already. What you want to go for is the work pieces. So blacksmithing can make plate armor and every other profession except alchemy can make chivalry. Chivalry is for your earrings, necklace and uh, rings. Um, yep. And then it can also make for blacksmithing's case, metal equipment work pieces. Leather working will have leather work pieces, tailoring will have uh, cloth work pieces, and weapon smithing will have weapon work pieces. As you can see here. I see that now as well, weapon smithing is the only profession that cannot make jewelry. So it's not as efficient, but everybody needs weapons. So weapon is going to be always the first thing people want to craft at the beginning of every new layer as well. Weapon is the go-to thing because that's your main damage modifier. So weapon is very important to have. But you probably get more value from tailoring, um, leatherworking and blacksmithing because it allows you to make jewelry and the weapon type, uh, the armor type as well. Now back to the end game crafting, what you want to do is craft these jewelry workpieces or the uh, armor type workpiece by making the ingots and it needs the ore and it needs the dragon flame coal which you can simply get from the vendor and that's as easy as it gets. The eden fruit you need to farm or drop or buy whatever as you see in the description. It also drops in KOE, uh, Alri Health has no drops apparently. So KOE is the only way to really farm this from. Or you can buy it from the Aurea Pandora. Okay, and then there's the last part in this big ass guide, which is about uh, inspiration. Inspiration is a value that allows you to get bonus epic great um, ingots or whatever profession it is that you're crafting to get to that full set of full epic items. Now, obviously, when you look at me right now, I don't have any single epic when you start crafting so don't bother going for the epic one simply try to finish up the full set of color of course but when you do get a few epic uh, like in this one this means we have two right now we have two extra from our inspiration now how inspiration works is that whenever you finish a crafting it's going to give you some inspiration points and for every 200 inspiration points you have you basically have a bonus epic work piece now the amount of inspiration that you get per crafting depends on lots of factors. I did some uh, attempts and kept track of everything. What it comes down to is that no one really crafts for inspiration anyway. You only craft for the item. So you're only, always going to try to finish up with one singular color. As you can see here when you do a full 5 greens you get 30 inspiration points here. When you, get, when you do a mixture of these you get close to none. I got 0 stand sometimes, I didn't get something finished. But when you get a full blue set, you get 40, so you get more points for that. 
You get between 40 and 20 as well when you fuck up in between with different colors. So it's always very, it's very, it's var it varies a lot. When you get a full set of epic though, I didn't get that. But when I got 4 epics and a blue, I got 100 points. So a full epic set does give you a ton for sure. And I guess a full epic set with one color off is still going to give you a lot as well. Now when you use the inspiration button to duplicate some of these, let's continue this and see how this plays out. Very bad, I can't even use them because I didn't get a third epic, so I cannot use it at all. So you're only going to be allowed to use it from the game if it sees that you will complete a full epic workpiece set. If not, then you will keep your points and basically waste them because you're not getting any points while it's maxed out as well. So it's a uh, mix and match between whether it's efficient or good or not. Gonna, I'm going to go and try to get a combination so that I can use the points. There we go. So we got the first attempt, three epic blocks. So that means we can instantly use the inspiration to fill it up. Now I recommend still trying your all attempts. Because if you do get a full set of epic war pieces, then you will still get inspiration points. For example, if I use now my backup duplicate, you see I lose 200 points because I duplicated whatever color I had still left into an epic war piece. So I have a full set of epics, so I get my bonus materials. But we have 200 here, and we open up with 200 again. So you will not get any inspiration points for using, in that one crafting attempt, the inspiration bonus points. In game has also some description. That's the inspiration bar showing the inspiration level growth for the currently used recipe. You can spend the inspiration points to improve the crafting result. So yes, it also varies which recipe you're crafting. So now we have hammers, which we have 200 of right now. Uh, I'm gonna. That's the last one. If I would move to another item. For example, in the beginning, we're gonna move to a different recipe. The inspiration will be different. It's not reset, it's just a different inspiration. So every recipe has its own inspiration progress. So that you understand it as well. So each recipe has its own inspiration progress. And that is all I can tell you about inspiration. That's simply how it works. It's basically a bonus to get a full epic workpiece set. So that you can get the bonus. And you'll have to um, level up the inspiration points that way. Remember at the beginning of the video. I got inspiration points, uh, inspiration potions that you can get from alchemy or from the tutorial quest and these will give you a 10% boost uh, on inspiration gain for every crafting attempt you do and there's a bigger amount of percentage you can get on free to play via the boutique cash shop and that is about inspiration guys And that is what it is, bro. That is how it works. That is what you do blacksmith for and weaponsmithing. It's to be able to craft tier 2 armor. And it's to be able to sell. You can also sell these work pieces. That's a very good gold income. Trust me, it's very good. Simply value your own time that you spend on ores. Add to the cost of your uh, dragon flame call. And go at it. The tools are required to make tier 2 as well. Like I said, this is something everybody needs, so you can also craft tools and sell them, they're all tradable. Um, yeah, that is really it. Hope you guys enjoyed the guides, hope you guys learned something new about uh, pro uh, crafting and professions. This basically applies as well to weaponsmithing, to tailoring and um, leatherworking. Leatherworking tailoring simply uses different materials, but they're very easy to get. Uh, there is easier to get than blacksmithing and rapid smithing like I said so see you guys next one have a good day peace